everybody welcome to this live workout with my friend dean hollingworth uh he's always a lot of fun to have on the summit and i hope that you watched this session uh yesterday and today we have a fantastic one uh in my esteemed opinion <laughs> uh for speed and power and it's going to be as, as dean told me a bit earlier a little bit different from past live workout sessions so we hope that you have a lot of fun and uh you know get a lot of value out of this session and uh, really big thanks to Dean for, for setting this up again. How are you doing, Dean? I'm doing great, Maraban. And as always, thank you so much for having me on. I, I truly enjoy um, our hour together, our time spent together. And I'm very flattered and humbled that you asked me back uh, year after year. I mean, it, it really, is, uh, really is something. So thank you so much for that. Yeah, anytime, anytime. And uh, so I guess maybe I'll just start off with a general question for you which is i mean how, how how much or how often do you see players training you know it for speed and power like are they do you think they they can be working harder on their speed and power um you know uh outputs and, and training and then if so how could how could that we benefit from it okay so just i'm gonna take a small step back and just um talk about when you first brought up this idea of speed and power, and that's why you really like the topic. It was your idea. Um, so one of the things is that the first thing I thought of was, oh my goodness, like this is going to be difficult to do in a small area. And then having put some thoughts down on paper and worked on it, I really came to see that you can work certain aspects of speed in, in a closed environment like this. And definitely the power aspect of it we can do quite a bit of work in I'm, in, I'm in the small area of our bedroom here that we can do this perfectly. So um, that's the first thing. What we do see is at the junior level and, you know, ITF level, 18, 19 year old players and the professionals, they're working on speed and power a lot. And it's, it's very, very important to be doing this if you want to have any type of success on the court. Where we see a big drop in terms of speed and power development is as we get up older into the older categories, into the, the adult players, that they stop, stop training the way they should be training in order to have a more productive tennis game. So it's what we're going to go over today is really going to be for almost any level of athlete. I'll definitely point out if I think this is something high end and you need some caution to do it. But a lot of these exercises are quite simple, um, very demanding on some levels. Doesn't mean that it's that it's dangerous. It's just got to put some we have to put effort into this and we're going to be able to put this across a lot of different age groups and levels of athleticism excellent dean i'm really excited for it and uh, everybody in the chat uh let us know where you're from uh where you're tuning in from and yeah i mean with that i'm happy to get into the workout i have my uh water here and some some fuel as well from precision hydration so yeah um i'm ready to go dean yeah. and uh, we'll see how much you torture me <laughs> all right well not too much but just before we get into it one thing i definitely want to say is one of the big mistakes that's made during speed and power training is that people do not allow enough time for recovery. If you're just working on sprints one after another uh, on, on the court or on a field and you're not allowing for full recovery of the body, then you are in traditional sense doing conditioning. Same thing for power. What breaks my heart really a lot is when you see athletes performing, you know, sets of 15, 20 reps in a row or, or using med ball throws uh, with a med ball, especially the juniors, that is too heavy. And you see them going through in a very slow motion and awkward looking. That is detraining. That is not helping them. That is creating, uh, in my opinion, a bigger mess. We're, we're teaching them how to become slower. But also, we're doing it with bad mechanics. So that's just the big thing I want to send out there and, you know, start from there. Yeah, that's a great point, Dina, because I remember back in the younger days when I would just, 
my focus was on as much weight as possible. And so I started doing like quarter squats, you know, with like 300 pounds. And it's like, you know, what are you doing, mate? So <laughs> you need the right form and then for to transfer to the court with the proper functionality. Absolutely. And, and I said, how heavy is that medicine ball you got there? Uh, this is six pounds. Okay. So that's traditionally, that's pretty good. That's a great weight to start with. Um, unless, you know, you're, you're 10 or 12 years old, you probably want to start with a four or even a two pound ball. It's not about, it's not about the, the weight. It's about how you're able to throw that ball with speed and power. If you're throwing it slowly, you're training slowly. Got it. And just to clarify, you said 10 to 12 years old, mentally or physically? Because I got one of those. <laughs> <laughs> physically. <laughs> okay. Just We're kidding. looking at the physical. Uh, okay. Oh. Yeah, the physical. But, you know, I don't want to get into a big discussion about this. I want to get into the workout. But also, yeah. when you're working with the junior athletes, the 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 maturation of, of the athletes very important. Are they able to follow instructions? You know, if they're not and it's just a disaster, you really have to be able to take some steps back and build it up from there. So that that's a whole nother topic on to itself. Thanks so let's much. Go. Yeah, let's do it. And uh, let's say a quick hello. Hey, to Dario. Hi, Dean. This is Derek from Uruguay. I've learned about you thanks oh, yeah. to Tennis Summit 2021. I follow your content and IG. Love your core up Fridays. All right. Woo! Fantastic. Oh, wow. Yeah. Hello, Jay. Look from Moco, where I'm at. Hello to you, Pierre, uh, from New York. And nice. uh, Justin. Oh, Justina. Uh, Hi. Oh, Justina. How, how are you? Nice to see you. Um, thanks for tuning in. So, yeah, let's do it, Dean. Okay. So, this is what we're going to start with here. So we're going to, listen, if you're going to be working on speed and you want to be working on power, your warm-up is important. You don't want to go into this cold. If you go into this cold, I guarantee the level of possible injury increases dramatically. So, Maribang, we're gonna, I'm going to start on the mat here. Like this, all fours. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to drop my butt back to my heels. Come forward, left foot near the left hand. Good. Now put it back, drop back, right foot, right hand. Okay, so we're really going to start getting the hips, the hamstrings. Do that five times each side. Oh, I like that. Yeah, even when you drop down, drop your head down between your arms, you're going to feel a great shoulder stretch. The arms are heavily involved even in lower body plyometrics and power. Let's go right side. Last one, Maribyrn. Back, okay. left foot forward, hold. Okay. Back leg is completely straight, pushing your heel into the ground or back behind you. Left hand, rotate up towards the ceiling. Five times. Got it. Two. Exhale as you rotate out. Three. Don't rush. Open the chest up. Four. And five. Very good. Left hand down again where you got it. Now the right hand rotates five times. One. You'll find this a little bit more yeah. difficult. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Four. Last one. Five, both hands down, drop your right knee to the floor. Okay. Okay, now keep your hands where they are. Slide your butt back. Don't move the hands. Try and keep your back as straight as possible. Foot flat on the ground. Oh, boy. And forward. Slide back and forward. We're trying to get a really good little mobilization, stretch of the hamstring in and out. Kind of like a bank robbery. You don't want to stick around. In yeah. and out fast. Speak from experience. Yeah. <laughs> right leg is straight. Put the left leg back behind. Push up position. Right foot forward. Rotate the right hand five times. It's that easy. One. Five. Right hand down. Rotate left. And open up. Two. Good. This is great for thoracic mobility. 
Now, if you heard me ever talk, we've spoken about this on your show, really important for tennis. Yes. Both hands down, left knee down, slide back five times. Three, four, five. Right foot back. Okay, now I'm going to walk my hands towards my feet, keeping my legs as straight as possible. Big hamstring stretch. Oh, yeah. Stand. Woo! Oh. We go as far as we can, right? You go as far as you can, then stand up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Maximize hands. Uh, Sorry, I'm just putting you full screen. Okay. All right. We're going to take both hands. Push up towards the ceiling behind, reach the hips forward. So I'm reaching behind with my hands, shoulders back, hips forward, hands back down to the floor, legs as straight as possible, walk out into a push up position. Woo. Yeah. That's it, don't let those hips move. Walk back, same thing. All right. Reach up, shoulders back, hips forward. Nice. And what's the pace for that, like medium or? Yeah, we don't want to rush through this too much, but you don't want to go too slow either. I want this to be a, a okay, stop holding that. That, that The shoulders forward, uh, the shoulders back, hips forward, it's just in and out again. Oh, I see, I see, okay. Yeah. So that's a good one. Now the last one, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to walk out. But this time when I come back, I'm going to walk into a deep squat. Oh, yeah. Nice. Good. And hold that. Chest up. Proud chest. And now this is pushing out on my left knee with my left elbow. Right elbow. Right knee. Both elbows. Just getting these hips ready for what's to come. Now we're gonna put our hand down, left hand down on the inside of my left knee. I'm gonna rotate five times with my right hand. I'm just gonna turn for the camera. All right. And the heel should be down, is that right? Heel should be down. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. And then we'll go five on the left side. Got it. I'm going to turn as well. Great. This is great. All right. Looks good, buddy. Thanks. All right. Now we'll stand. Woo. Get, oh. Ho, ho. <laughs> I saw you use your hands to get out of that squat. Oh, shoot. <laughs> All right. Wide, wide base. Drop the tush, slide side to side. Now notice I'm wider, buddy. Wider, wider. Oh, okay. Much wider, like sumo style, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And okay. the lower you go, the tougher it is. Yes, confirmed. You want to do about five each side. Don't need much more than that. We're getting close to finishing here. Good. I'm going to walk my feet back together. Oh. I'm going to stand with my, my uh, hands on my hips. Uh -huh. I'm going to stand on my left leg. I'm going to take my right leg and just rock it forward. Now in the back, I'm doing this. I'm kicking, I'm kicking back, but here, just nice and easy, getting that hamstring. If you're having trouble with balance, it's okay to use the wall. But the beauty of this is I'm also really getting good activation on my left ankle. Good. Switch after 10. Okay. And you'll feel a, a difference in balance between each leg, I guess. Well, that's a great, you know, I love that you said that. Because for yeah. coaches watching their athletes warm up, every everything you do in a warm up is a assessment is an assessment. So if you're seeing that your athletes having more trouble on the left ankle than the right or vice versa, 
that should be addressed. That's probably a bit of a, a red light going on. Last one here. We're going to come and just come out with the hip to the side, trying and staying as tall as possible. Eight, nine, 10. We'll go 10 on the other side. This is our last exercise. I lied, there's one more. What? <laughs> uh, the left. So when you're doing it, right, Marban, I see you like kind of hunching. I am trying to stay as tall as possible and allowing my hip mobility to mm. do as much work as possible. Yeah, I'm compensating. Yeah, you're, I see a big tilt, but you got better. You see, it's just cueing by, by a coach that can be so tremendous to the athlete. This is warm up stuff, right? We're learning yeah. valuable tools right now about our athletes, and we should also be implementing skill developmental tools for the athletes in our warm up. Warm up should just be thought about as getting warm. It is, but there's just so much more. Last one, right foot in front, circles with the ankle 10 clockwise, and 10 counterclockwise. Good, switch. As we're doing this, I'm just gonna talk a little. I've been talking a lot. <laughs> it's good. Don't shut up. Um, yeah. You'll notice that I'm barefoot doing oh. this. Okay? I don't want to my time. I recommend it for everybody. Unless you have great experience, meaning you've done, okay, we're done. And, and meaning you've done a lot of exercises barefoot, I wouldn't do it. Like, I wouldn't start today barefoot. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we're going to examine first our speed. Now, it's very difficult to do speed in a little four by four area here. Speed is something, I'm gonna say this right now, if you wanna get faster, you gotta have, you have to practice running fast. Bottom line, there's no two ways around it. But we can work on our mechanics, which will get us faster also. Okay. So the first thing that we see often that is butchered in sprinting is the arm mechanics. Think of it this way. If I'm running forward, I want my hands coming forward and back. You see a lot of athletes coming across their body like this. So that means every time I take a step, it's this. Mm. But we want it coming straight. From a side position... This is what we want to see as I'm running. Hand here coming up and towards the face, back arm being thrown back. Okay, so I'm just going to get a little closer to here to here. Just this. These arm swings. So what we do see a lot is this from people, right? This, this, this elbow oh. movement. Yeah, it's stiff. We want the shoulder, it's shoulders. Have you ever seen an Olympic sprinter? Their upper bodies are huge. I mean, their shoulders are monstrous, right? Because that punching action is so big, exactly like you. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that double bicep. Don't, don't, uh, don't play Thank with you. me. You're huge, dude. Thank you. You do that, I don't even see the wall anymore. That's right. <laughs> Thank you, I love you, dude. So the first thing we're gonna do it's just arm swings for 20 seconds. And just start slow. Work on the form. If you have a mirror, mirror near you, try and watch it and just go slow. So I'd like to see that arm be thrown back. Throw that hand back behind you a little more. There we go. Keep the body nice and still. Nice and easy. We're just warming up. Five seconds. And stop. Good. Okay? So, two things. A, when we're doing it, we want our, 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 our upper body, we want our arms to be nice and strong. That doesn't mean stiff. I shouldn't mm. look at someone and see like they're, they're running in water. Okay? Mm. That's, that's a nice analogy. If you ever seen someone running in water, it doesn't look very fluid. We, we, but we don't want to see spaghetti arms either, right? Like overcooked spaghetti. Now, we're going to go faster. This is where it can start getting messy. 
Okay, because I can. Most people really good like this. Then when you start putting some pace into it, it becomes a little bit more difficult. Give that a try. Go, 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 go. Push, 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 push. Good. Stop. <laughs> nice. Okay. <laughs> what did you say? Okay. What's that? Oh, I was just wondering what you thought. Was it going back enough? Like, I don't know. Any... As you went faster, and what is the case often is that as we go quicker, our arms start to shorten. Okay, okay. We get short. We don't keep that same distance. So your front arm's coming too high. It should oh, come up high. higher sockets in the front, not higher than that, really. Oh. Oh, look yeah. what, here? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I saw I I took um I took a speed course down in Texas a while ago, a long time, and there was this great, amazing high school coach there. I wish I could remember his name. And he used to say, "I sockets to hit pockets," and oh, it stuck wow. with me for like over ten years. Wow. Yeah. Huh. There you go. That's looking better already, but. Okay. But what I want people to realize is I'm not trying to create an Olympic sprinter here, okay? I'm just trying to get the athletes quicker for a drop shot. Yeah. All right, so we got next. Here we go. Good stuff. We're going to do something. I'm going to do them standing, but I just want to say these are called wall drills, where I would line up on a wall here and perform them. But we can do them standing. The beauty of this, I just want everyone to understand, the beauty of this is this 40 or close to 45 degree, whatever you want to call it, is really my acceleration posture. I should look like that when taking off. Okay? Okay. Oh, you got the wrong hand forward. Oh, shit. Sorry. Right. Yeah. yeah, throw that right hand back more. There you go. That's what it should be like. If I'm split stepping and moving out, that's what it would look like when I'm right. accelerating to a ball. There's an amazing picture that I've used so many times of Andy Murray sprinting on court. It's a still shot, and it looks almost exactly like that. Yeah. So what we're going to do now is we're going to stand on our left foot. We're going to raise the right knee. We're going to put our arms in. just want to see which way is best here, okay? Just like this, okay? Now the important, two important parts here. Knee should be up just above, uh, just around the, the buckle belt area and the toes of my right foot are pulled up towards the ceiling. When I say go, we're going to switch as quickly as possible. Go, yes. I always maintain a good Nice posture, go. Ah, I was a little off balance there. Okay, so look at your left leg, toes up. Toes up, okay. Toes up, there you go. Put the, put the left arm back a little more. Now, here we go, go. Go, go, go. Switch, good. Yeah, go, two more, go. Good, go, that's it, stop, good. Okay. Okay. Yeah, just the balance. I got to work on the balance and the technique a little bit. Yeah. So if we did it on the wall, because I know some people don't want to put their hands on the wall, and I respect that. I'm putting my hands out from my shoulders, and I'm pushing the wall away. My knee is up, and I'm just going to go. Go. Around your back now. You're getting a little round. Oh. Yeah. Straighten out. Push your hips forward, bud. There you go. 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 One more. Go. Good. Perfect. Off. So the so, wall is a little easier. Is that right? It, it's a good. For balance, it is. Okay. But what happens with the wall is if we don't have good core engagement, oh. we start seeing this. We see yeah. like the hips dropping towards the floor. Yeah. 
if we don't have good hip mobility, what happens is, is this rounding back because your hip is trying to buy mobility from your back. Yeah, yeah, great point. Well, all right, sorry, Dean, which one would you recommend we start with first? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I'd probably the wall drill because okay. it takes out the balance aspect. The, these standing ones are really not acceleration speed drills. It's just something that you can do on your own if you yeah. don't have a wall or something to hang on to. Yeah. Maribyrn? Wrong, uh -huh. wrong forward, buddy. Oh my God, I, I really gotta train this. Okay, so what we do from here, that looks good. Thanks. Now, we can go doubles and triples. We'll, we'll, we'll skip over the doubles, which would be... <laughs> yeah. And now we'll do triples. This is where it becomes, it can become quite demanding on the body. Yeah. So you have a choice. Standing triples, right leg up. Mm -hmm. If you good. start with your right leg, you should finish with your left leg forward. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, good. Yes. Go, go, go. Do it when you want. Nice. Yeah. Good. The arms are great. All right. Now okay. try it on the wall, please. Okay. Give it a yeah. shot on the wall. Take a little break. Okay. Take a little break. Breathe. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, you the tell me, you, hey, let me ask you this question before you go into the wall drill. Yeah. Do you feel Do you feel warmed up? Are you breaking a little bit of sweat? Oh yeah, definitely breaking sweat. My body's feeling a lot more warm and ready, so. Feel so nice. my question to you, it's it's not really a question, it's more talk. Why wouldn't you do this before practice? To help to help your athleticism and also yeah. get you really nicely warmed up prior to practice. Yeah, there's no reason why not. There's no reason. <laughs> <laughs> you sound you sound almost guilty. Yeah, no, I mean I do certain warm-up, you know, like dynamic warm-up stuff. Um, yeah, you know, but I I haven't done some of these exercises, which That's I really okay. like. Like especially this one, some I forget to do this a lot. I felt like it really opened things up. Oh yeah, and especially if you're gonna start. I don't know if you play on hard court or clay, but if you start oh. reaching for a ball and sliding, you really need that that inner thigh to uh, treat you right. Okay, let's yeah. try some triples on the um, on the wall, please. Yeah, sure. Uh, you might have to just let me know my posture and everything. Yeah. So I see your hips are too far towards the wall. Oh, okay. There. Hold that straight. Now, push the wall away. Be very strong in your upper body. Okay. okay? Drop your chin. There. Drop your chin a little more. There you go. Perfect. That. Now bring up either left or right leg. Okay. A little higher. Good. Come up onto your toes of the other foot, on the right foot. All right. Do it, buddy. You're in perfect form. Thank you. Go for it. Okay. Yeah, whenever you want. Go again. Good. 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 Last one. Excellent. Very good. Awesome, actually. What I really liked about that, that was good, and why I'm like very impressed, is that the knees are coming up almost at the same height as the knee that started the drill. Mm -hmm. Often what we see is it gets really small and choppy, and then they finish big. I see. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So th yeah. those are the exercises I think are pretty much the most important ones that we can do in a close environment. Okay. What would happen now... And that's really important for speed is the power development of it. Okay. okay? Awesome. So if you want a sip of water, now would be a good time. All right. Great. I'm being nice. Appreciate that. <laughs> and we're going to start with something that's called, people call it ankling or they call it pogo, pogo jumps. Okay. 
And I just feel that this is truly, truly important. Um, I've had very good, this is a very low level power type of movement. I've had very good, uh, a great experience with this in developing faster athletes. So all it is really is I'm just, I'm just, I'm not bending my knees. I'm just asking my, my Achilles, I'm using the stretch reflex of my Achilles to get up as high as possible. Uh-huh. Now, the the arm... what's that? Sorry, sorry, Dean. I was just, oh. the arms is in a similar, like, height as well, like, back and... No, no, that's a, no, it's, don't be sorry, because that's an amazing question. My okay. arms are just, it's a small okay. little pop. Now, two things about this. You want the, yeah, but you're giving me more of this, right? Oh, okay, it's okay. Like, punch forward. It's, it's coming from the shoulder. There you go. The other thing, Mariban, is we yeah. want the front of the foot, the balls of the feet, to land flat. My, my heels are never touching. Uh -huh. And when I jump up, I make an effort mentally to try and pull the toes up to my nose as I'm in, in air in order to make good contact on the ground. If this is my foot, this yeah. is the floor, I don't want this happening. Yeah. I'm going to be making, and I jump, pull up. So you're almost like slapping the ground with the balls of your feet. Okay, okay. Here we go. Good. Okay, good. Good. Stop. Yeah, we don't want to do more than 8 to 10 here, okay? Oh, yeah, right, As right. soon as we start slowing down, that's when we, you know, you just pull the plug on that drill and, okay. and rest up and do it again. Yeah. It'll be interesting. When you re-watch this again, because I know you'll spend hours re-watching it. I will. <laughs> Okay, like you don't have anything else to do. You're gonna see the movement of your arms is a little, little shaky. Okay. And I'd love to be able to see you get a little higher off the ground. Like, don't rush. Go for okay. height. Go for height. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's try yeah. that one more time. Got it. Got it. There we go. That's better. Good. Awesome. Done. All right, good. Beautiful. Good. Yeah, go for height. That was big. Cool. What? what? Oh, no, I was just thinking to myself to go for height. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Now, what I would do with that, if I was outside or if I was on a tennis court, I'd do a few of these like this, going forward slowly, and then break into a sprint because I've just had the feeling of what it's like to push the ground away. And then it really, it makes, for myself personally, it made a huge difference in my sprint. And I'm not talking that long ago. I'm talking like five, six years old. Wow. <laughs> so, okay? Got it. Okay. All right. Survive so next. So when we talk about power, we often think of, you know, right now we're working everything in a straight back and forth line. Everything's sprinting. Power, developing power in the lower body is great for, for more than just two things. But what we're thinking about right now, especially for tennis, is being able to get out of your split step, being able to change directions. Mm -hmm. And I say two, but it's actually three. And then also our power development for our forehand and backhands, regardless if it's open or closed stance. Also, power for our serve, it's infinite. So what we're going to start with is a little bit of a lateral movement. And I will explain why I'm starting with this. So I'm going to stand on my left leg. I'm going to drop down into what we could almost consider a quarter squat. And I'm just going to jump and land, okay? Okay, now, there's a difference between going like this. Uh -huh. I would like to see an arc movement. Oh. So you're trying to go 
as far as you can to either the left and the right. I see, I see. Got it. Okay. There you go. Good balance. Yeah, go get it. Good. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so on one side, you're starting with the left hand up, which is good. On the other side, you're starting with the left hand up, but you've got your left knee up. Oh, wait, so it, it's here and then here, right? It's just, I'm starting here and I'm just going, whoops, I, nice one, I screwed that up myself. So it's here. <laughs> or if you don't feel comfortable with the switch of arms in midair, you can use both hands and land at the same time, but I always try and land in a sprinter position. Yeah. So. You're good. Okay. Good. Yeah, yeah. Good. So that would be the first way to initiate, to initiate, initiate someone into this lateral bounding. Now, regardless of age, young kids may just want to start like this. People, the adult athletes, just doing this from side to side, nice and easy. It doesn't have to be maximum right away. We're yeah. learning. So what I'm learning is a push off, deceleration and balance. Push off, deceleration and balance. Right. So the next step would be to start on the left leg, jump all the way over to the right, and back. Now we're talking big time stuff now. Good. That's it. Nice job. Woo! Now, be careful with a yoga mat on a on a floor like that. She will Yeah. I was <laughs> yeah. Thank you. That's why you remove yours, yeah. Yeah. There we go. Good. Go again. Now stop for one second. Okay. The goal here now is to jump onto your right leg and get your butt back as quickly as, as possible. Yeah. Would you sacrifice okay. like length for quickness or no? No, you really, listen, at the beginning you could argue that maybe if you did it a little shorter, <clears throat> You, you come back, but the, the further you go, the greater the explosion uh, to your right and the greater the need for strength. Listen, somebody who doesn't have the strength, I mean, if you're, if you're working with a weaker athlete, they may need to get stronger in the gym prior to them getting more powerful here with, with you during these exercises. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. There wait. you go. You should be you should be fine now after that big that big lift. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all ten pounds. <laughs> all ten pounds. All right, so try a couple more. Okay. We'll get it back. Good. Back. Nice. That's better. Dude, that's awesome. Good. One more. One more. Okay, good. Try the other side. Okay. Okay, before, take, breathe, breathe. So we're doing like five to seven reps right now. Mm -hmm. Once you finish a set on both sides, you're gonna, you, you probably, not probably, you have to rest for 60 to 90 seconds. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll do something in between and we'll come back. Here we go. Okay. Okay, do the other side though. Yeah, yeah, oh, sorry. <laughs> wow, you're taking this 90 to this, this rest. <laughs> Uh, way too seriously. <laughs> Good. Pop back, buddy. Woo! Good. That was 10, so maybe should I stop? Or? Yeah. Five each side, seven each side. We're cool. So let's talk about um, med ball throws. So grab your med ball. Okay. 
So the way the way I program my power days is the athletes will do exactly what you did. Uh-huh. Then they'll go to a wall and load and explode. Now, having said that, this movement here of pushing back, this push back here, correct? Uh-huh. Doesn't it resemble the beginning of our stroke going forward, pushing yeah. that ground away and coming through? This uh-huh. is where it becomes really important. So when we're this, and this is a nice way you can do this at home. Just don't let the ball go, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I'll try not. And let's get cement walls. That jip rock's gonna lose that battle. So yeah. I got my screw ball. I'm loading up. I'm, I'm in neutral stance. I'm, I'm uh, writing. So this is my forehand. Okay. One thing that's important is a lot of people. This is this is my uh, pelvic bone here. They load up, they lean, and they shift. Mm. I want to have a little bit of internal rotation here and then come through. I'm using the ground, as you just did in your jumps, to push away and throw. Mm. Good. Let's check did this out. Did the loose as well? Or any... With what? With the arms, any technical... Uh, oh, I, I hold on to that. Just hold on to that ball. Okay, yeah. Hold on to it, please. Don't send me any bills. Now, lift the ball up higher with oh, your oh. arms up straight. Oh, okay. There you go. Now, load, before you go, load up onto that right leg. Yeah. Load. Yeah. Now, push through the ground. You will pivot on your right foot and come through with the hips, and the ball will follow afterwards. Good. Good. Relax the upper body a little more. You look a little tight. <laughs> I'm not even going to make a comment about that. <laughs> that looks like that wasn't the first time you're doing this. <laughs> no comment again. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's go. Come through. There you go. Good. And come back. Good. That's it. Nice. So what I really like here is that right hip is coming right through and facing the wall in front of you. When we come through, we want that belly button to be coming towards the net, right? So that right pocket is thrown towards the net. Try a couple on the backhand, please. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Oh. You like your backhand when you play tennis, don't you? You know what's funny? Actually, no, I like my forehand more and it's, it's strange because a lot of times I find myself not utilizing, you know, the, the hips enough on the backhand. Sometimes I arm it. So it's kind of weird. I do it properly with the med ball, I guess. But when it I play. It really I good. Hit. Like you quite surprised me there. It looked really, really nice. Yeah. Oh, give me five. Give me five. Drop right into the position. Drop right into the position. One after another. Yeah. Drive through. Good. Let it start with the foot up through the hips, through the core. Good. Nice. Looking good. Thank you. I try. You're welcome. We're so nice here. All right. Last one. Last one. Last one. Good. Perfect. Well done. So you see, this is going to take you at least 30, 45 seconds to execute your, your med ball throws. Uh-huh. What we also do is then I'll put in a corrective exercise in there too. And we'll just help also with either hip mobility, but more often than not, it's thoracic mobility. We're doing med ball throws. So I want that middle spine to be very mobile and assisting the athletes to achieve the best type of throws that they can. Cool? Cool. Cool. Good All right. Let's keep, let's keep moving. All right. All right. So you're really going, um, <laughs> you're really going to love these. Oh, that doesn't mean. <laughs> you're really no, no. I'm being serious. Okay. Being, I, well, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things I'm just going to move the ball because it's irritating me. One of the things is when we notice we are either being powerful in our med ball throws, it is this rotational thing that's occurring, right? Mm -hmm. So 
one of the better exercises you can do is a squat jump. So first of all, can we do a squat jump? Okay, so this is this is a low level plyometric, um, pretty low level to intermediate, I should actually say, where I'm just going to make sure there's nothing over your head. Okay, I'm just going to come down and land. Down and up, up, and land. Good, try that again. Good, drive through with your arms. Okay, so one thing here. Uh -huh. A plyometric utilizes the stretch reflex, wow. which is the body's own way of using the muscles. So as I come down in my eccentric movement here, I'm building up energy and I explode up. Okay? Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing. If I took my finger here on my chest, I pulled it back, you get that you get that snap, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's the stretch reflex. So a, a big mistake that's made during plyometric training is athletes starting here, jumping and ending here. We mm. stand, we build up energy. If you stay in this position too long, you, we will have energy leaks. We'll lose the power we built up. So down and up as quickly as possible. Land, restand, restart. So don't think of it as a set of eight. Think of it as eight sets of one. Got it. Okay. So give me four big ones. Good. Stand. Land and stand. Stand. Now do it. Good. Drive those hands up. Good. You got a little more height there. Last one. Excellent. Good. Now for the fun part. Damn. <laughs> I can only handle so much fun on a Sunday. <laughs> okay. So what I, this is now, you may be thinking, well, how's this helping me? Um, how's this helping me uh, with, with my rotation or, or more powerful rotation? Good question. We're going to squat jump. just want to find a spot where I don't break the chandelier. I'm going to squat jump and. Oh, yeah. 90 degree turn, 90 degree. Because you'll notice I'm coming down. I'm not. You, we can do this with our arms a little, but what? My legs don't start turning. I don't start turning my body here and then jump. I'm up and I'm turning in midair. I am pushing off my right leg differently then my left in order to create that rotation. I see. Okay. All right. You cool with that? You can ask questions, eh? Woo! It's, yeah, it's good. Yeah, good. Do a couple there back. Good. Good. Last one. Perfect. Bravo. Bravo. Thanks. Great coaching. <laughs> <laughs> Too kind. Where do you think we go from here, bud? Where do you go from here? We go back to lateral? We do 180s. Oh, 180s. <laughs> okay, okay. But before we do 180s, before we do 180s, I, I skipped over a step. So you did really well of this jump going to my left. Going to my right. But uh -huh. now I want to go. Oh. Uh, okay. They're back. They're back as quickly as possible. Mm. So, so are you not going to go for as much height then? Or do you still go for height? Oh, no. I still go. For, listen. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Here's if you. The more height you go for. First of all, you're working on that explosivity to get up. Yeah. But also, you have to work on the deceleration, reacceleration part of your jump. So the higher you are in the air is going to cause for a, a more, uh, I'm not finding the word, but it's going to require more effort for you to come back. Sorry? Oh. No, sorry. I was going to say stretch reflex, but yeah. Never mind. It's just, it's going to be a harder work period for you to come back. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All 
All right. Good. Put your feet a little wider, just a little. Oh, wider? Okay. Yeah, just slightly. There you go. Ass out. Boom. Hit the ground. Good. One more. Good. Perfect. So one of the things about plyometrics is that phase, that amortization phase of when you hit the ground to how quickly you can come back off again. Right? So someone that is not as powerful will have a harder time to decelerate, to reaccelerate, to cut down that phase of touching the ground and being quick off the ground as you can be. Yeah. And does that, okay. does that just come from doing this more or do you need to work on your strength as well, like strength training and then come back to this or? Yes. Everything. Yes, Everything. <laughs> well, there is a learning curve. I mean, there is a learning curve. Let's be honest. You know, this yeah. is probably one of the first times maybe you're doing this or you haven't done it in a, in a, in a little while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, um, so some of them. Some of them. Sorry. Yeah, some of them. Yeah. No, I know you've done some of them for sure, but it's there's also a learning curve with it. You know, I'm not concerned for you about your, your strength in doing these. Um, some of the concern might be for the younger players, the junior players that, that haven't done any type of, of uh, strength training and, and are not as strong as they can be. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now, right. now we're going to do our 180s. Mm -hmm. Well, now I'm going to start here. I'm going to jump up. And come back one at a time. We're progressing. That's an important part of the plyometrics, Maribank, is progression. You don't yeah. want to go to step five if you haven't covered the first other four steps. Okay? Mm -hmm. So let's see what we got. Got it. it yeah. All right. Yeah. Should, I a little quicker? Should I do that quicker? No, no, no. We're just doing one at a time right now. We're just learning stuff. Sure, sure. Yeah, you're good. Okay, so I do see when you're turning to your right and you landed, your your upper body wavered a little, like you kind of tilted over. Wow. Now, I don't know if that's just you learning the landing process, mm. but try maybe, it again. Maybe, you know, my, my left side is a little more imbalanced as well, so maybe that plays into it. I'm not sure, but... Yeah, it could. I mean, we'd have to really test you out to see what's yeah. going on. There. It's not. Yeah. yeah. Try one more. You cool with that? Oh yeah, of course. As many Good. as you want. <laughs> uh, that was better. Yeah. Okay. So sometimes it's just the realization of of what you're doing and and someone pointing it out and it's easily corrected. So we're going to leave that jump until we go the there back type of, of uh, 180 degree squat jump. Let's grab that medicine ball again, please. Yes, sir. Well, since I said please, you kind of have to. Yeah, yeah, I'm obligated with your kindness. Okay. So now we're going to do open stance. Okay. Here, I'm a, I'm a righty. So I'm uh, coming to my forehand. I'm loading up on my right leg and coming through. Here, up to? coming okay. through. Good. Load up. Yeah, keep your arms away from you as you're coming through. And load up. Good. You should feel a good amount of body weight on that right leg. I'd say somewhere around 70, 30. And drive yeah. through. Good. Pushing the hips forward. Good. Nice. Two more, and then we'll go backhand. Okay. I've never seen you play tennis. Now I really want to. Yeah, I come to Montreal and we'll play some. It'll be fun. Try, try five on the backhand, please. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Good. Good. Try not to hold that position at the bottom too long. Come down and up. Okay. Yeah. More realistic. Yeah. Good. 
Now, as you're finishing these, I'll just talk a little bit. You can finish off the last two or three. For people who don't have a medicine ball, what is a nice substitute, and it, I've had great benefits with it, is attaching an elastic to the fence and doing the same movement with the elastic right behind you. Uh -huh. And that, that's, a nice, um, that's a nice change if, if you want to, especially before practice, you really get the body feeling and activating what needs to be activated for good rotational power and strength. Gotcha. Beautiful. Okay. You want to try the 360s there, uh, the 360s, the 180s there back? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll try the 180s and back, yeah. All right. Here we go. 360s maybe next time. Oh, sorry. Huh? You got this. Woo! Good. Go again. You're good. good. Now, I just want to say this. I would cheat a little if I was you, meaning I would start here. Oh. Jump Use this movement to help you. I see. Yeah. And what's the reason? Would I want to keep doing that all the time, or is that just a temporary thing for the progression? Or, I, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you why in a second. We just okay, did that. Sure. Thank you. No, you're good. Uh, oh, <laughs> I, I rotated too much. I think. Yeah, but yep. you see, that's what we're trying to do. It's same thing. It's like not having a good setup with your racket, but yeah. good racket prep really does help in the rotational power. Yeah, I felt a lot of power though. That's why I like almost went, you know, all the way. Well, yeah. and that's why doing 360s, you know, I'll tell you a quick story. I was giving an online class and I tried a 360 right here and I crashed into the dresser. So <laughs> as long as your clothing is not hurt. <laughs> you have you have to be careful with this stuff. Now, the other thing is grab the med ball, please. Yes, sir. And I'll do that that 180 with the med ball. All righty then, mate. All right. Yeah, so this becomes really difficult. This is a higher level. Here we go. Nice. Woo. Harder. Right. And you have to control that upper body a lot more, right? The falling over, the, the control, the deceleration. Yeah, 100%. Ooh. A little balance on the back issue, but yeah, that's okay. Good. Now put the ball down, please, and try one each side. Okay. Whoa! I, I, I <laughs> that was sorry. I got to do that again. That was like way. Are you sorry? Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Thanks. You're good. Oh. Oh God. I guess it's when you don't have the ball anymore, it's like you're trying to adjust back. Yeah, yeah, it does create that, that weird feeling, but you should be able to get really good height. Again, your body was tilting forward a, a little, so these are just little things that I think would be really important for you to watch out for. Yeah, 100%. Try one more. Yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Your reactions are the best. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, by using that med ball, it does bring you closer because you feel like you have more power, right? Like you have to yeah, control it. Yeah. Yeah. So now, like, getting close to a 360 becomes quite, quite yeah. solid. So like our, last, our last one of the day. Just going over my notes. Make sure you For sure. Yeah. So, jumping, we did our squat jump. Now let's do a squat jump as high as we can and land on one leg. That becomes really difficult. We're asking one leg to absorb the, the height. I mean, if I did a one leg jump, I can't jump half as high as I can and nail that. And with a little jump forward, and landing, we're starting to reproduce a little. I mean, we could do a quarter jump here and land on one foot, starting to look a little bit like our surf. 
Oh, I like that one. Like, but, but right now, am I, am I jumping forward a little bit? No, just do it in one spot. Anything where you okay. start adding extra dimensions to an exercise, it just starts increasing the difficulty level. So yeah. just up and down in one spot and land. Got it. <laughs> That's tough. Told you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so okay. the, the leg definitely collapses a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a little better. Okay. okay. <laughs> hey, jump up a little, jump up less. Okay. Okay. Jump up less yeah. and yeah. learn to line a little better. Yeah. yeah. That's all it is. There. And then gradually increase it. Yeah gradually increase and you could go to the other variations that we spoke about beautiful good okay. and then the last thing i want to bring up oh, do you want to go ahead i don't want to stop you oh no you're fine you're totally fine i just was, wasn't sure if i should do more or not but yeah, we're good. no i just i realized that it's already an hour and i don't want people to get bored oh no worries um I'm getting when, good uh, what's that we're getting great comments. I'll read them out later, but. Oh, a fantastic. Good. So what I want to go back to, which, and I feel really bad if I didn't cover this, going back to power, but implementing the power into the movement. So we're going to go back a couple of steps when we were doing this. I would, if I was trying to help an athlete develop lateral, better lateral ability, left to right, right to left, and I incorporated this lateral jump, I would definitely have them start, oh, split step, whatever it is, crossover, shuffle, split step, shuffle, boom, work on that outside, here, 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 push off, because this movement here, that push is that right there. Come back as, Maribang, start, start there, Go to your left and come, go to your left, come back as quickly as possible. Uh, how many should I do? How many shuffles? Like three? Two, two okay. most. Good. Go. Yeah. Go. Perfect. So here's the thing. You get great feedback from the athlete when you teach them this, yeah. and then they have to do that they go together yeah. power out of my split step i have my athletic box i'm trying to escape from the box so right away i'm gaining distance and then boom pushing back uh -huh. and we glide across the ground as yeah. you move yeah i love that good yeah do that again i just want to see something to go Good. Okay. So it's it. It's interesting. One more time. Good. Yeah. So when we change direction here, we want our upper body to be going in the direction we want to go back. Uh, right. So my shoulders will always take me where I want to go. Okay. Got it. So remember this this forty this this nice alignment we had for our sprint. Uh huh. Same thing can be said for my change of direction if I'm heading back to my left. Nice okay. wide base, boom, right there. Got you. You tend Got to have your head here. Your legs are good, but your upper body slightly off. Yeah, that's better. Good. Now try from the other side, but this time, this time, just to. Mess you up a little. Split step, cross over, cross over back. Okay, okay. 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 So what I would tell you, if you were my athlete in front of me, I would say, A, I want you to start in a lower position. Okay. Okay, because you're going to get more drive from your legs. Mm -hmm. And drive. Sorry, there we go. Let's step, drive off your right leg. Let's step, drive off your right leg. Dude, you're not split stepping. 
Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, right. You only said it seven times. <laughs> there we go. All right. There you go. Good. Drop now. When you switch directions on your left, drive off that left leg and head back to where you came from quickly. Drive, okay. Drive, drive, drive the ground away right out the window. Hit. There you go. Without the body coming forward. Now, I'm not surprised I'm seeing that because we were seeing that in the jumps. Yeah. Right? So if I'm crossing over and I'm coming to this side and I hit here and I'm doing this forward and then coming up, that's taking time away from my ability to be fast here because now you've come here. I've landed in some mud or quicksand. I got to get myself out to go back. Yeah, I keep my chest up, I guess. Yeah. There we go. There you go. Good. One more. Good. That's better, bud. Yeah. Nice work. Bravo. Thank you. All right. That's great stuff. That was yeah. excellent. Yeah. Do you have questions? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that was fun. Thanks a lot, Dean. I'm, I'm definitely going to, I know we we're joking about it, but I'm definitely going to rewatch it again and then try to look at my techniques. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Um, hey, you know uh, what? Before you ask the first question, all I want to yeah. say is everyone that's watching, you can do this for five to 10 minutes before practice, some of these exercises. And you will be helping your body warm up for practice, but you will also be increasing your athleticism and your skill development. Yeah, 100% That's on it. that, 100%. Um, let's see. A uh, uh, couple of highs here. Susan Swenson, hi from Palm Desert. Hello, Susan. Um, Hello. Sir Ferrant looks like yoga for tennis. I think it's, uh, he or she is referring to the first part. So any comments on that? The warm-up? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Listen, I mean, if you want to call it, there's just so much out there. If you want to call it yoga, if you want to call it body flow or all this other stuff or just mobility and strength, yeah, sure, why not? You can call it what you want. No problem. Yeah, some of it was a little bit yoga, yoga y, but I mean, it's, it's, you can call it, um, you can call it, uh, I know it's called the inchworm going back into a deep squat, or you can call it whatever it's called in yoga. I, I just look at it as a warm up for, for the athletes. Yeah. Yeah. I know hundred percent with that. Um, let's see. Oh, pal, this is terrific stuff. Thank you, Dean. It's very you. great. You're doing it. Awesome. Uh, Jason Bourne again. I uh, love that name. Can you comment <laughs> on <laughs> Jason has been on like all the live streams. So I appreciate it. Um, That's nice. You... Yeah. hundred percent. Um, can you comment on ACL injury prevention? ACL rupture mostly happens on two occasions, sudden direction change and one leg landing. Both are required in tennis. Thanks. Prayer emoji. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can say two things about that. First of all, that's a, that is really correct in, in what he's saying in terms of see this in the NFL on Sundays, unfortunately, where the guy's knee explodes because of change of direction um which is just ugly um and if we think about not if we think about it but we do know research has shown that women are two to six or eight times more likely to have acl injuries than men in non-contact you know situations so all of this that we did is great acl uh it's just learning you know like when you're doing the jump lateral from side to side one at a time it just, yeah. and you actually said a couple of times your knees are caving in during certain exercises, like the squat jump to the single leg landing. It's yeah. all great ACL prevention for uh, prevention of injury for the ACL. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you, Dean and Jason. Dario, uh, can you add load on the rotational to make more challenge? I guess we did some of that, right? Or maybe yeah. that was a couple before we yeah. did. Yeah. 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 You can for sure. Yeah, medicine ball and whatnot. Um, oh, yeah. Sorry, Dario said with a medicine ball. Um, <laughs> so, yes, we did it. Um, thanks, Dario. Jay, look, what if you use a narrow stance, not a wide stance in tennis? Any thoughts on that? For what specifically? Like, would it be like for, for, for um, at the beginning for return of serve or returning the ball or for open stance, closed stance? It, it's uh... 
Yeah, let's maybe Jay. Look, if you could comment on what you're thinking. I mean, I've, obviously, I've seen some people with like narrower stances on the ground strokes and stuff. But I, I would say this though: if if I'm waiting for serve or I'm just waiting for the ball to return, and I have a really narrow base, I don't think I feel as comfortable or as solid. If my base is 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 narrow, it's easy to push me off. If I get a little wider base here. Yes, for sure. I'm a little bit, I'm a lot more stable and I feel like I can go in any direction. Mm -hmm. Narrow stance to hit a ball, hard to get that drive. It's like if I'm narrow and I'm trying to start in one direction, hard to get that great pop as opposed to that. Yeah, yeah. Great, great explanation there, Dean. Appreciate it. Uh, Marjorie, um, do you get more benefits by doing these movements barefooted like Dean is? <laughs> um again as i said at the beginning first off i've done uh because of covid i've done i i, I don't even hundreds of classes uh in in this area on this floor i didn't start barefoot i just ended up doing it more barefoot um i think if you're good at landing barefoot you're gonna be even better landing with shoes on because this is this is the real challenge but again you'd have to i would never recommend uh someone to just start doing it full you know full force without actually practicing and getting better at it uh more benefit i i i, I definitely make that argument that yes you you do get better uh development uh, barefoot for sure cool cool great to know thanks dean and marjorie um Bernard, do you recommend plyometrics if the athlete has knee bowing in? Okay, so that knee bowing in is is when I would, I mean, are you talking about when you do a squat and the knees go in and it's this valgus thing happening? If your knees bow in when you squat, well, then you have to seek out either a therapist or, or a strength and conditioning coach that would help you eliminate that. Because there's no reason um, the knee should be bowing in like that. Mm, mm, yeah, very important to consult a professional there. Uh, let's see. Artie, excellent presentation. Enjoying learning a lot. Great, she, greatly appreciate it. All the best. Um, thank you, Artie. Appreciate that. Um, Jay, look, uh, this might have been clarification. To just move around the court in general, like boxing mobility. I think that's the narrow stance question. Yeah. Um, so... His question is like, what if you use a narrow stance, not a wide stance in tennis to just move around the, the court in general, like boxing? Okay. So, I mean, yeah, I guess so, you kind of covered it, right? Yeah. Well, again, but I, I, I want to give it when, when we're boxing, I mean, everything is I'm here. It's, it's smaller steps. The problem with the smaller steps is that if I'm trying to move and I'm using more of this boxing mentality and doing this with a narrow stance, I'm going to have to take six shuffles as opposed to two shuffles. Mm -hmm. okay? A narrow stance staying here, it's hard to move. A uh, narrow stance, if you want to maintain it, if you're thinking like a boxer, boxer always pushing off the back, back foot, back foot going forward, front, back, front, back. I don't want to have an athlete that looks choppy on, on, on court. I want, it, you know, there's, there's, there's a saying, if you can get there in three steps, don't use four. Yeah. hundred um, percent. Time is critical. Uh, let's see. Dario again. Great presentation. Dean, keep up the good work on, you. on your IG. Yeah. Instagram. Definitely follow D Dean. What's your um, handle on Instagram again? Thank you. It's underscore baseline power underscore. Got it. Baseline power underscore baseline. I just want to spell that correctly. Okay, great. Um, uh, for IG. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh yeah, Jack. I so I think we just yeah we just covered that one. Should should we do this barefoot? Or is it better with? Oh well, is it better with shoes? Well, if you're not used to doing it barefoot, yeah, it is better in shoes. And and unfortunately, depending on where you're going to be doing this training, there's a couple of things that we have to take into account for plyometric training, which I hadn't discussed. I'm lucky that these wooden floors here have a little bit of give. You don't <laughs> want to be doing, uh, it means some people don't have the option, doing plyometrics on a hardcore 
is hard for the body. So I would definitely have shoes on in that instance. But if you're, you know, if you're outdoors in, in a field, you just got to be careful about what's on the ground. But grass is really good because it has some give. But if you're going to do plyometrics on cement or like a, a marble or tiles or something, that that's yeah. not really good. Um, if you have to do it, you do it. Definitely your shoes. But it becomes more difficult on the bottom. Yeah, great and important point out there. Um, be uh, aware of your surface. Uh, let's see. Jason, what, what's your thoughts on knees over toes? For what? For the jumps? Yeah. Well, no, you don't. You don't. I get, if it's for the jumps, I mean, that's one thing. I, I don't think you want knees over toes for the jumps. Mm. The only way I'm going to get powerful is by using the glutes and the hamstrings. Here, if you, even if I stand like this, I got a flabby butt. <laughs> I mean, the, <laughs> the glutes are not on. Here, I'm activated. I don't want this when I'm jumping. Not mm. when I'm jumping, no. Got it. Got it. And how about like lunges and things like that? I don't know if maybe he meant that. Yeah. So I'll answer that for sure. And there's a lot of controversy about this where people say, if I'm doing a split squat like this, you know, I don't want this happening, but your mm -hmm. knee will go. Like if I'm doing a lunge that looks actually, I'll just put myself this way. I'm doing yeah. a lunge here that looks pretty good. If I look down, I can't see my toes. I'm not yeah. at 90 degrees here. I'm here. The realistic part of this is that when you're playing tennis and you're reaching for a ball, your knee is going to go over your toes. So you want, you want your body to be prepared for everything that's to come. But I'm not going to train a lunge and have my heel come off the ground and my knee shoot way over my toes. I don't like the knee over the shoelaces. I just don't want it way over the, the, the toes. Great. Excellent. And for follow-up, Jason, he was thinking of knees over toes in the squats. So I guess similar to the lunge that we talked about, right? Jason, or I'm for, yeah, but it, it's a different problem because you'll see people that squat and they don't have good ankle mobility. So the ankles get jammed mm -hmm. and then you start seeing this. Yeah. Put, put, put two, put a little plate, like a five or a 10 pound plate underneath your heels and you'll notice that you're able to sit back in a proper in a proper squat your knee should not be like shooting over your toes in a squat got it and uh and more on the subject dean so jay look says becoming a supple leopard book says knees over toes leads to injuries kelly stark is the author of it no, i don't know okay. have you read that book i don't know no. but again i mean the leopard i don't know what that is now if you're training with no load that's a whole different story. Okay. Mm. If you're loading up, I wouldn't do it. But if you're if you're doing various exercises, so you know, in this type of it's called phase six, where I come down and I do something like this and like this, this is way knee over toes. I'm just working on my mobility and my flexibility. There's a difference, but I wouldn't put load on that. Got it. Got it. Excellent. Um Let's see, uh, Artie, Shad, great presentation, terrific stuff. We appreciate it very much. Thanks. Excellent. Thank uh, for sure. Dean, I also just want to let people know about um, your program, excellent program, Baseline Power. You want to talk about that a little bit? That's really nice of you. Thank you. Um, so I, about four years ago, I developed the um, eight most asked questions in tennis, and it's uh, Baseline uh, it was put together. It's called the Baseline Power Series. It's eight videos addressing all of the your fitness needs for tennis. So there's a series on how to do a proper warm up. There's a lot of the exercises we did today. There's movement. There's strength training. There's recovery, injury prevention. It pretty much covers anything a an athlete, a tennis player would need to become better physically and athletically. Excellent. So I put the Thank link you. in there. Oh, of course. Yeah, I put the link in there. Um, and uh, let's see what else. So, yeah. So in terms of just, you know, for people who have watched this presentation and they're really excited and they want to, you know, uh, emulate this. I mean, what's what's your general thoughts on, 
you know, structuring? Like, should they just follow it, you know, uh, as we did it or should they adjust it in any way or anything like that? Yeah. So you want the way it was presented and, and tell me if I'm wrong. This, is, this was my intent today was to present it to you in different levels. OK, I gave you the easier, the easier exercises first and we progressed each exercise to a more difficult exercise. So if we go back, for example, to the sprint or our speed mechanics, everybody can do the arm swings. It's a question of how fast and not, not nothing longer than 20 seconds, how fast you can do them while keeping good, um, good technique. And then yeah. progressing from a single to a triple leg type of, of wall drill or standing drill with it. You could just do singles. But those are pretty, pretty much almost any level as long as you're doing them correctly. Then from there, you know, the, the, the pogo jumps, the ankling, whatever you call it, obviously that's something we don't want to go high reps to begin with because you will feel that the next day if you do too much of it. The front of your shins will be screaming from that. So just doing everything slowly. You know, when we're looking at the squat jumps, just learn on getting a great squat jump first before trying to land on one leg or trying to do them in multiple, you know, in succession uh, for six to eight reps. And then all the waiting until we do the 80, the, the 90 degree or the 180. Again, all the progression. Do it if you feel you've conquered it and you don't do it until you you know, you do it until you don't get it wrong anymore. That's that's the right way of doing it. It's supposed to think, oh, I got one right. I can move on. No. Until you, what I tell my kids is until you can do your three or your two or three sets of six to eight perfectly, we don't advance to the next exercise. And then okay. just taking it from there. Excellent. Excellent. The um, one thing I would say is try and, try and keep contacts, meaning how many times you, how many times you hit the floor between 25 and 40 the most in a day with at least two, you know, 48 hours rest in between each session. Hmm. And, you know, this may sound like um, a very uh, specific question, but like you, I imagine that you and you, you have your athletes like write down and record, you know, like, you know, what they did in terms of the exercise sets and reps and things like that. So like, do you use like a notebook? Do you like print out a paper? Like, what do you suggest? Because I think keeping track is important. I Well, you know, anytime you go into gym, you should be keeping track of what you've done, uh, what you've yeah. done. Uh, with the plyometrics, I mean, we keep our plyometric session anywhere, session anywhere for three to four weeks. So we'll do the same plyos twice a week for mm. three to four weeks. When I start seeing that the kids are like, nailing it and it's just getting to be almost boring for them then i will change something in order to stimulate to stimulate the exercises and their their attention to it also does that answer your question yeah yeah no that does thank you thank you no, that's yeah. excellent um let's see um j look it's about health intuitive body kinesthetics yeah that's important yes for sure um Let's see. Uh, Bernard DeMonte, uh, how many days a week do you recommend? So you kind of touched on that, but just to make sure, how many days a week do you recommend it? So is that, yeah. is that the two days or? Yeah, so plyometrics twice a week, more than enough. You know, twice a week's good. Speed work, on the other hand, you can, you can ramp that up to uh, four days a week for sure. And it, but it, the, the whole thing is, Maribel, it doesn't take a long time. Because if you're going to be on court, you do some of your wall drills, arm drills, and then just work on getting a better sprint. I mean, at some point, it's going to have to be more than what we've done here. It has to be more. The only thing is, I would really say to people, if you haven't done a sprint in a long time, please don't go out tomorrow and do a sprint. You will pull a hamstring or a hip flex or something. And even people that jog, that do a lot of jogging, say to me, oh, you know, I was playing, for for example, me, I was playing touch football and I had to sprint and I pulled and I don't understand. I mm. jog all the time. Jogging and sprinting is not the same thing at all. Sprinting mm. is violent. It's aggressive. You're trying to achieve, you know, max, max acceleration. It's going to take a lot. So just take your time and build up to that. And you don't need more than four sprints. You know, like four sprints. If you do it well, get in, get out. Thank you very much. Excellent. And, and just to like clarify for everybody, just like briefly, I guess, or however long you want to take, 
Um, can you distinguish between like speed versus and power versus plyo? Like in terms of like, because some people probably watched the presentation, they weren't quite sure like what is what and everything. I mean, uh, ask your question again, please. Oh yeah, just just generally distinguishing like what speed and power versus plyo is, because I guess I would okay. just in case some people are confused, like what yeah. what's what. So this the speed work is really is is the sprinting. You know, anything that involves the sprinting. Yes, the pogo jumps is a plyometric exercise that is good for sprinting. You know, uh, the the plyometrics. Now, not everything we did plyometrics. Some of it's just jumps. I mean, plyometrics is, as we said, it has to involve that stretch shortening reflex. You know, that short, getting into it and out of it quick. That lateral jump back and forth is not a real plyometric. It's just more jump training learning to become more efficient at the plyometrics so the the first half is really our speed stuff with with the wall drills um unfortunately it's hard to show like a skips in 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 a bedroom but those skips uh and then just learning to to get out of the blocks quickly from the baseline to the service line you don't have to sprint 40 yards you don't need like a great 40 you know the nfl that timed the 40 just work on 10 to 15 meter sprints. That's it. That's 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 the way you want to go. I hope that answered it. Yeah, no, 100%. Thank you for that. Um, Bernard, uh, again, ah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. There you go. There's the answer to your answer. <laughs> um, and let's see what else. Uh, so where would you like people to go to follow what you're doing, get in contact with you? What do you what would you like them to do in terms so of that? Listen, if you have any questions about this, I think, you know, the, the eight, the eight part series is really solid. We work a lot on sprint mechanics there, a lot on the jumps. That's one way it's $59.99. It, it's not that expensive to, to, yeah. um, to, uh, to purchase. Obviously on, if you want something free on my Instagram account, I have a lot of speed stuff, uh, speed stuff. Uh, recovery work, uh, warm-up material. It's all there for you. Uh, you can send me a message within Instagram if you want, if you want something perhaps that's more suitable to you and personalized. I do do online training and, and set up workout programs, so we can look at that too. Excellent, excellent. And, and don't you still have like um the class, the weekly class going on where like the, some people from the summit actually join that? and, and Yeah. Join. Um, that's, that's, that is a nice point out. Um, uh, it has officially come to an end this oh, week. Okay. I know yeah, up. Yeah. because we, we laughed and, and we were very happy that it was two, two years of doing classes every Tuesday and Thursday. Um, yeah. but you know, now that restrictions are down, people are yeah. out more, the, the numbers came to a, to a smaller number and we decided to put that to bed. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. You're open now. So cool, cool, cool. Um, I guess we'll try to sneak one in if uh, one more, if you don't mind, uh, Dean. Yeah, sure. Awesome. Um, Laurie, hey, Laurie, you recommended these exercises for match warm up. Which ones would be best for that? Yeah, so great question, Laurie. Thank you. So I would definitely like, you know, the arm swings. I think that's money. That's really important. You can do a wall drill if you get good at the wall drill. So do triples. And I'm just talking three each side. And then, you know, a couple of lateral bounds uh, would be really good. And obviously, the med ball throws, if, if you have somewhere where you can throw it into a fence or use an elastic, you, you can get all that stuff done under like around six to seven minutes. It's mm -hmm. just you got to do one after another. Nice. If you do like those warm up exercises like at home and then you drive 30 minutes and then you you play like does it it still helps you right like i'm i was wondering like does the effect go away after a certain time you know what i mean yeah i, I mean the whole thing there's two factors that i think about that first of all sitting is probably like the worst thing you can do yeah. <laughs> you know and you know you just warmed up and then you're sitting your butt down for 30 yeah. minutes in a car um yeah. during the summer if it's warm you know, it's a little better if you live in a climate like ours where it's cold and you start getting your, your body temperature will come down right away. Like you said, it's better than nothing for sure. Uh, you probably need to do something a little again to restart the engine. 
Yeah. Yeah. That makes I don't, sense. I don't have an exact answer of how long, Yeah. you know, it, it's like when athletes, you know, like when I was traveling with some players and we're trying to get ready for a, for a match, you know, on game day and, you know, you're watching, you're waiting, you're, you're third on court one. And, and that last, that last match before you go on it, it went seven, six, and then you think the person's going to win in two and then they don't, you've warmed up, you have to come down. You start warming up again. The only thing is you don't take as long to do it again because you don't want to tire the athlete out. Yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Awesome. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So I think we're in good shape here, um, Dean. And also just a quick mention as well, um, you know, for those of you who want to be able to refer to this uh, session and Dean's other session and all the 40 other sessions and plus, you know, all the bonuses and whatnot. Um, I do have a link, uh, Dean's link here if you'd like to support him and get the all access pass if you're interested in that. Um, definitely these lessons are fantastic to be able to refer back to any, you know, anytime you want. Um, so check that out as well. Um, but Dean, yeah, I guess um, I'll give you the floor. Any last uh, thoughts or anything um, before we conclude this really fun and uh, helpful session? Yeah, last thing is, and as always, thank you to you and thank you for what you do. And, and I'm always so honored to be on with you. And, you, you know, people should know that the work you do is, is so valued and you are such a great person also. I don't know if people can see that right. as, as we interact together, but you're a great human being and I'm very proud to call you my friend. Thank you so much, Dean. Same with you. You're so passionate and give so much to the uh, tennis community and fitness community. So I appreciate it so much. And you do really great work. Um, so thanks, Dean. I do want to get this question is actually, Jason, is the Baseline Power product a series of videos we can follow like this for live workouts? It's, it's more a demonstration of the exercises that you can do. It's more demonstration. So, if, for example, it, it's kind of like exactly what we did here in terms of we show easy plyometrics to harder plyometrics. Uh, plyometrics. We have simple speed and agility exercises. We have advanced speed and agility exercises. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely uh, top quality stuff. Uh, let's see here. Jay, look, it's been a great presentation. He is very good at teaching. Excellent. Ah, I agree. That's really okay. that that means that means the world to me that's what i strive for yeah 100 percent. so and yeah and you know in addition so i have the links in the in the uh, comments but also if you're on the summit page for dean the links are also beneath for uh, baseline power program and you know the all access pass and whatnot so definitely check those out below the video um but yeah thanks everybody um it was a lot of fun and uh, I'm sure Dean is going to come back next year with a, a torturous program for me, <laughs> but we'll see. Yeah, uh, we got to figure out something where you don't look so happy at the end next year. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not. I'm not happy. No, I'm kidding. We should do a great core session. That would be wild. Oh, you, you're going to get, if we do that, you're, you're going to get me. Um, yeah, yeah, you're going to have to get, you're going to have to buy one of these for sure. You're going to need a Swiss ball. I will definitely, yeah, I need to, I need to get one of those. Um, yeah, that, so, that, the Swiss ball's money to have. So easy to have a workout with it. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Dean. So, yeah, thank you, everybody. Thanks, Dean. Um, really appreciate it, and it was so much fun, and I'm sure we'll make some yes. content together. And also, you know, if people are in Montreal as well, like, can they, like, visit your club? Do you do appointments or? Oh, hell yeah. No, I think that's the best. That's one of my, I, I love meeting people that I've met online and working with them that that's such a thrill yeah yeah excellent excellent and, and and just to name name your club and and yeah so that people know well you can you know what it is <laughs> <laughs> oh come on man. club it's, cote de lice <laughs> yeah it's pretty close so it's club cdl or club cote de lies and that's because oh. it's on the street that's called cote de lies yeah okay got it yeah. excellent you always yeah. make me do that all right, cool. Well, um, awesome. Thanks so much, Dean. Uh, oh, thank you. Thanks, Jessna. Yeah, fantastic. Jessna is somebody that's been in my class for the last two years and that I work with online. Wonderful, wonderful. I had an amazing 10-week program uh, for junior athletes to learn to become better movers, and she was part of that. So. Oh, brilliant. Good stuff. Um, great job training that's with awesome. Dean there. 
Yeah, love to see it. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, Dean. And we'll catch you next time. And we do have one other live session tonight at 8 p.m. with Peter Freeman on the top 10 lessons uh, from the summit. So <laughs> we're not done yet, but <laughs> Rush it. yeah, yeah, exactly. Thank you. Thank you. So you too. Thank you. Um, yeah. So thanks, everybody. Take care. Thank you, Dean. Thanks, and everyone. Good to see you. Bye. Bye.